Everywhere you look, you see objects. You see objects with different shapes and different colors. All these things consist of matter. Matter is the substance from which all living things are made. Plants are made of matter. Animals, like these fish, are made of matter. Matter is also the substance which non-living things, such as rocks in this mountain, are made. Buildings and cars are made of matter. And this plane is made of matter. Water is made of matter. Even the air we breathe is made of matter. There are thousands of different kinds of objects in the world, all made of matter. During the next few minutes, we are going to explore the many different characteristics of matter. First, what is matter? Matter is anything that takes up space. Solid objects, like this tractor, are made of matter. Liquid, like water in this river, is also made of matter. And gas filling up this balloon is made of matter. Even people are made of matter. Everything we touch, taste, and see is made of matter. As we have seen, there are many different types of matter. There are many ways to describe it as well. Different types of matter have different characteristics or properties. A property is a trait or characteristic of matter. Matter can be described by its properties. For example, this ball can be described as being round, blue, rubbery, and smooth to name just a few properties. Matter has two kinds of properties, chemical properties and physical properties. Chemical properties describe how matter changes into other new matter. Let's take a common substance, wood, that comes from trees. Throughout the world, wood is cut and used for cooking and heat. That is because wood has the chemical property called Flammability. Flammability is the ability of an object to burn. Many types of matter have the ability to react with other matter. This is called reactivity. For instance, when vinegar is added to baking soda, a reaction takes place. Physical properties are the outwardly observable characteristics of matter. You can see, touch, or taste physical properties. Let us see what physical properties we can observe in this piece of rock called marble. Marble is a rock that is taken from the ground in quarries like this one. It is used in making buildings and is useful in household items and is important in making many products like paint. Marble has many physical properties, some of which we will discuss in a few moments. One of the most obvious physical properties of solid matter is color. This piece of marble has a light whitish color. Leaves on these trees have a green color. This cow is black and white. And these pumpkins are orange. Odor or smell is another physical property of matter. For example, this gasoline has a strong odor. Many flowers have a sweet odor. And many objects, like our piece of marble, have no odor at all. Shape is another physical property of matter. Liquids do not have a definite shape and take on the shape of the container whereas solids, like this egg, have an oval shape. And other objects, like these floating pieces of ice, have an irregular shape. Our piece of marble once had an irregular shape, but now it has a regular shape called a cube. 
Texture is a physical property that describes how rough or smooth an object is. Some objects, like this bark on a tree, are rough, whereas these silk scarves have a soft, smooth texture. Color, shape, odor, and texture are just a few physical properties. Mass and weight are other physical properties we will now consider. Here is a tricky question, so think carefully. What weighs more, a kilogram of feathers or a kilogram of rock? If you said neither and that they both weigh the same, then you are not easily fooled. Even though these two types types of matter weigh the same, they are quite different from each other. Let's see how. Mass is a physical characteristic of matter. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Different objects have different amounts of mass. Weight is another physical property. Weight and mass are not the same thing. Weight is a measure of mass. While the mass of an object can stay constant, its weight can change. Weight is the force of an object due to the gravitational pull of the planet. For example, the weight of a person on Earth is much greater than the same person on the moon because the gravitational pull on the moon is much less. Even though the person's weight changes, his mass stays the same. The weight of objects is most commonly measured on a scale or balance. The metric system uses kilograms and grams to measure weight. In our example of the feather and rock, they have the same weight of about one kilogram. So what makes them different? While they have the same weight, they have different volumes. Volume is the amount of space something takes up. Solids, such as these crystals, liquids, such as this glass of juice, and gases, like this propane burning on this stove, all have volume. All matter has volume. In other words, all matter takes up space. There are different ways to measure volume depending on whether it is solid, liquid, or gas we want to measure. Liquid, like this milk, is measured out in containers using units of milliliters, whereas in the laboratory, beakers or graduated cylinders are commonly used. Gases are measured with different containers that measure gas in cubic centimeters or by weight. The volume of solids can be measured in a couple of different ways. For solids with a regular shape, like our piece of marble, the volume can be computed using a ruler and doing some simple calculations. Volume equals length times height times width. With our piece of marble, the length is 6.7 centimeters, the height is 7.5 centimeters, and the width is 7.5 centimeters. These are then multiplied to get a volume of 376.9 cubic centimeters. This method works well with regularly shaped solids. But what about irregularly shaped solids, like this rabbit figurine that is difficult to measure with a ruler? Displacement is a method for measuring volume of irregularly shaped solids. For example, when you put your hand into a beaker of water, watch what happens to the water in the glass. It goes up or displaces. Displacement involves submerging an object in water and then identifying the amount of water that moves up or displaces. To compute the volume of an object using displacement, first it is necessary to read the initial amount of water in a beaker and record it. The value reads 150 milliliters. Then the object 
which is placed under the water so the water rises. You can see the new level of the water is 175 milliliters. The initial amount of water is then subtracted from the new value to get the amount of space or volume that the figurine took up in the water to get a value of 25 milliliters. You may be wondering why the units of volume for the piece of marble were in cubic centimeters and the units for the rabbit figurine were in milliliters. This is the beauty of the metric system. One milliliter of water equals one cubic centimeter of water. To prove this, let's look at a cubic centimeter. See how its length, height, and width are one centimeter. If we multiply the length by the height then by the width, we get one cubic centimeter. This is an actual representation of a cubic centimeter. You can see here that one cubic centimeter is equivalent to one milliliter of water. Going back to our feathers, they have an uncompressed volume of 16,000 cubic centimeters. The rock and the feathers weighed the same but the feathers had a much greater volume. You may be wondering what causes this difference. It is the same principle that causes some objects, like this rock, to sink in water, and causes other objects, like this log, to float. The difference between the two has to do with their density. Density is the amount of matter per unit of volume. Different objects have different densities. For example, most metals, like this piece of lead, have a high density, whereas gas has a low density. Density can be calculated using the equation density equals mass divided by volume. With our piece of marble, we found the mass to be 1,000 grams, and the volume to be 376.9 cubic centimeters. By dividing the mass by the volume, we get a density of 2.65 grams per cubic centimeter. Do you think the density of the feathers will be greater or less than the density of the piece of marble? Let's do the math. We know the feathers weigh 1,000 grams and their volume is 16,000 cubic centimeters. By dividing the mass by the volume, we get a density of 0.06 grams per cubic centimeter. As you can see, the feathers have a lower density than the marble. In other words, the marble has more mass per unit of volume. During the past few minutes, we have explored some of the chemical properties of matter, such as flammability and reactivity. We also explored some of the physical properties of matter, including color, odor, texture, and shape, as well as mass, volume, and density. These are just some of the many properties of matter. Next time you get a chance, try to identify some of the properties of matter in your surroundings you just might be surprised at what you find. Fill in the blank with the correct word when you hear this tone. Good luck, let's get started. Number one, anything that takes up space is made of Number two, A is a characteristic of matter. Number three, properties describe how matter changes into new matter. Number four, color, shape, 
and texture are properties. Number five is the amount of matter in an object. Number six, the weight of objects is commonly measured on a Number seven, is the amount of space something takes up? Number eight, volume can be measured in milliliters or centimeters. Number nine, is the amount of matter per unit of volume. Number 10, density equals mass divided by 